Reminds me of North Dakota, my first assignment. How cold was it? Well, it was so cold that if you spit, it would turn to ice before it hit the ground. It was 42 below. That's cold. I think I was 18 or 19, and uh, but we had a radar site there, and uh, that was my first assignment. Come on. I was born in August 18th, 1939, which historically speaking is when Hitler invaded Poland with Blitzkrieg and started the Second World War. Lived out in the country, it was north of Detroit, Michigan. It was basically farming, agriculture. It was a pretty simple life. I graduated from high school in whatever it is, June of 57, and uh, well, I had to do something. Nobody suggested I go to college, because nobody in the family ever went to college. And so I thought, oh, the military is a place, I, you know. So I called maybe a dozen guys of all the different branches, and most said that the Air Force, by this time the Army Air Force was gone, and now we have the full United States Air Force like today. It didn't, uh, didn't sound like such a bad deal, you know. And one day I just went down and signed up, didn't even tell my folks. And, one day, mom got the message that I was gonna be leaving for the military in January of 58, and I did eight years. I was going to a radar school, whatever that meant, and uh, that lasted, I don't know, three months. They taught us how to write backwards, how to use headsets and what they call RT procedures, uh, telephone and radios. We became part of a network called the Air Defense Command. The concept of the radar, Air Defense Command, was surround the entire continental United States to include Canada and Alaska to look outbound away from our borders, waiting for and looking for the penetration of, if you will, Russian bombers, because the Cold War was intact from about 1953-ish through 83. There was a lot of fear of nuclear war between the United States and Russia. And our radar sites would give early warning. We operated 24-7, 365. I ended up going to uh, North Dakota as my first assignment, and the next one was the center of Minnesota. The next time was in the center of Montana. Then it went up to Kalispell, and then I went to Bangkok, uh, up country in Thailand, for a year in 1963. I was at the corner of Cambodia, Laos, and Thailand, and there we got to watch Russian aircraft flying north and south out of China over Laos taking supplies to the Viet Cong down to the Mekong Delta. My last assignment was at Coos Bay, North Bend, Oregon. As a farm kid from Michigan, it was a total surprise, but at age 18, you're willing to take on any challenge that goes before you. And when you hold up your hand and say, I've joined the military, and..." I'm going to do the best for my country. You all of a sudden became a patriot. And whatever they told you to do, whatever they ask you to eat, wherever they want you to go and stand at attention and have a pretty uniform on, you did it. And you never once thought about it. You, you just did it. It's kind of where you go from being an adolescent to an adult. You're on your own. You know, you better make your bed. You'd better show up to work on time. I left on January 16th, 1966. I've fulfilled a full eight-year contract. Here's my Class A uniform. Staff Sergeant. Got my ribbons and medals. 
This might be called maybe a winter Class A. This is my summer tans. Dacron, I like this one the best. They, they just breathe well and very comfortable to wear. And uh, I was issued this in 1958. No, it doesn't fit. Uh, my chest cavity has uh, enlarged about twice as much as this jacket would hold. I just can't believe it was me, but it was me. Over the years, people have given me things. This was brought back from Saigon when I was up country. Uh, this particular bell uh, was given to me in 19, well, I guess it was 2002. I was Lieutenant Governor with Kiwanis. I'm also a life member of Kiwanis. And just the other day, I got my certificate for 55 years of service to Kiwanis. All of the collection of my life of small gifts that have been given to me all have a meeting are in this cabinet. This is how I see myself. This is how my friends see me. As a real turkey. <laughs> so I moved to uh, Sisters, Oregon here in uh, 2007 and uh, there was a VFW meeting down at City Hall and I went down to it and I was really impressed with the way it was run, how the guys were, and I joined it. And I also joined the American Legion. There we are. Oh boy, flags, more flags. We post well over a hundred flags in and around sisters and uh, we put them up at uh, four or five times a year during patriotic holidays. Our flags are up here for 75 days a year. It really adds a culture into your heart about the country. Is it a piece of cloth? No. It's your country. It's your freedom. It's your life that you chose to live. Here we go, guys. One for you. Tell us when you're ready. Got it? Okay, that's one. Tighten her down. We'll take them down next week and put them back in storage. I think we put up a few over 100 flags up and down the street here and then down the middle of town, Cascade Avenue, and uh, I'll be putting up these flags in Sisters, Oregon as long as I can, until I can't, it'll happen. If I have to sit and direct from my car. It's always an honor for me to stop when the job's done, look at the flags, and throw a salute. God bless America, and thank you for the freedoms you've given us. Two. I guess I live and breathe the American flag. Not surely why I do, but I do. It's just I'm very proud. Mm -hmm.